Welcome, I'm Harald Sack. And I'm Antan. And this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number six, Intelligent Applications with Knowledge Graphs and Deep Learning. In this section of the lecture, we are going to talk about knowledge graph completion. Okay, let's see the following problem. When can we say a knowledge graph is complete? That's of course a very difficult question simply because of the open world assumption. However, we know already different knowledge bases and we might see which of those, you know, covers more. So check out here DBpedia and Wikipedia and we want to see whether all Skyfi films that are in DBpedia are also labeled as such in Wikidata. Which means to see whether, of course, Wikidata is as complete as DBpedia is or not. We can do this by a simple federated query. So we have learned about federated queries if we look at that. So we have the upper part here. Let me quickly switch on the laser pointer. We have here the service part where we are talking about DBpedia. And here we are looking for Skyfi movies. And then we connect it here via WD item here to the Wikidata data service endpoint. And here then we simply look for things which not exist here as being science fiction films. And this is exactly what we try out to do on the next page. And of course, we can try out this query live before I present you our prefabricated result. So let's see what happens here. Takes a while. And then you see, okay, there are 286 uh, movies that are not labeled as sci-fi movie in Wikidata. And there are, <sighs> let's say such famous movies as Under the Sun of Satan and Pet Cemetery Coraline. I remember Coraline, that was nice. That Pet was a Cemetery Neil Gaiman. Pet Cemetery is Yeah, famous. about dead cats and stuff <laughs> like that. Okay. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Let's return to our general problem. So the problem of completeness of knowledge graphs here. So we see, for example, here 70, uh, 272 films were missing when we did exactly this query. When we did it right now, it was another number. And I'm pretty sure when you do this, then in October, you will find again another number. Luckily, it would, it would grow smaller, which means Wikidata would become more complete in the end. But the thing is, is there a way how we could predict what is missing and could we complement exactly what is missing. And there we are here in the realm of so-called knowledge graph refinement. So in knowledge graph refi refinement, we have this assumption that knowledge graphs cannot be complete because it's part of a real world. It's, it's an approximation and it's a work in progress. So it might contain information about each and every entity in the universe, but then the attributes, for example, of these entities may not be there yet, as you can see with the um, tagging of movies as science fiction, right? So it is unlikely, particularly if we use heuristics methods to apply to knowledge graph construction, that we will be able to have a knowledge graph that is 100% correct, because particularly in the instance of Wikidata, the data there is um, uh, added by a lot of people and some of the users may, may or may not be experts in the data that they are trying to edit. So to address those shortcomings, various methods for knowledge graph ref refinement have been proposed. So for example, such as entity resolution or um, collective reasoning, which involves probabilistic soft logic. And for this um, lesson, we will talk about link prediction on knowledge graph completion. We will be focusing on this approach and as well as dealing with, dealing with missing or erroneous values and so on. Okay, so we focus on knowledge graph completion. So how does this differ from error detection? Knowledge graph completion, what we there do is adding missing knowledge to the knowledge graph. For example, we could add an entire triple, for example, if it's missing that Isaac Asimov is a science fiction writer, so his occupation is science fiction writer, we could simply add it. Of course, it's rather easy then to distinguish this from error detection. There we identify wrong information in the knowledge graph. For example, we have to find inconsistencies. For example, when we have 
two triples in, and uh, one is Isaac Asimov is a human and the other one is Isaac Asimov is a novel. Then of course we see, yeah, there is probably something wrong. So, let's continue with knowledge graph completion. So an approach in knowledge graph completion is, as we already discussed in the previous um, slide, is to use knowledge graph embeddings where we uh, put or we embed the semantics of the entities and the relations in a latent space. Where, and then after which we can make inferences by learning and operating on these representations. And such embedding models, however, do not make use of any rules. As you can also um, remember from our um, lecture on loss functions and uh, uh, creating negative triples, we didn't even write things there that said, okay, if this, this uh, entity is a human, therefore it cannot be a novel. So during inference time, we use um, the embeddings to predict. But this means that the embeddings we have is just also an approximation. Therefore, the accuracy will not be very high. So for example, if we have to predict in Wikidata which fact may be complemented, for example, the Matrix, the movie, has a genre science fiction film. We don't know the uh, that or it has not been encoded in our knowledge graph that the matrix belongs to the genre science fiction film. And knowledge graph completion, this is what we predict. We predict the tail um, entity. But that's not the only thing what you can do in knowledge graph completion. Mm -hmm. So given a specific triple that we might suggest, like for example, Isaac Asimov is a science fiction writer, we could ask, is this correct or not? So that would then be uh, characterized as triple classification. So the result of that would be probably yes, and you would have then here um, a probability of 95%, for example. What Anne just told us is we have here, for example, a subject and a property, and we want to know what is potentially the right object. So what would be the tail of that um, triple that is missing? So tail prediction here for Isaac Asimov and uh, occupation would probably result in something which gives us science fiction writer with a high probability. And also, of course, he was a chemist, a biochemist, to be more precise, and stuff like that that would probably follow later on. The other way around, if the subject is unknown, we are in the realm of head prediction. There we want to know we have a given object and a given property and we want to know who was a science fiction writer. And then of course, according to the likelihood and of course the possibilities of your uh, trained knowledge graph that you have, probably Jules Verne, who might be one of the most, let's say, famous uh, science fiction writers of all times, he might be suggested as on the first place, for example, with 91% closely followed by, by Herbert George Wells, for example. If the middle part is missing, so the property, this is called then relation prediction. Isaac Asimov, and then how does it relate to sci-fi, to science fiction writer? The answer might be, we might choose here the property occupation, because this fits best according to the structural properties in our graph, and that might have a high probability of 95%. A special case of linked prediction that we also consider is called entity classification. And there we want to know the type. So this is type prediction. We want to know what type is Isaac Asimov. And of course, it's clear that Isaac Asimov might be a person, might be a human, might be a sci-fi writer, might be many mm -hmm. things. So this is not necessarily a one-on-one -on -one problem. So that can be particularly in that case many classes. So type prediction is a special case of tail prediction and of link prediction. So here we illustrate link prediction tasks with knowledge graph embeddings. In particular, we will use translational embeddings, an unsupervised method. Uh, for example, we have already discussed in the previous lecture trans-E. In trans-E, we have the embeddings of the head or the subject and the embeddings of the relation or the predicate. And to be able to predict the tail, we just apply uh, vector arithmetic. So we sum up the embeddings of Isaac Asimov and occupation, and then we look for the nearest neighbor in the embedding space. So how do we do this? 
we can apply, for example, cosine distance. And as an example here, we can say that we get the score from the cosine distance or cosine similarity. We say that psi phi is the most likely tail for the head and relation pair of Isaac Asimov and occupation. Okay, what we have to distinguish or differentiate for link prediction are two different tasks that are, have different difficulty. First of all, let's have a look at so-called transductive link prediction. What is that? So we predict now links in the same knowledge graph that has been also used for the training data. So for example, we have here a knowledge graph that has been used in the training and then here we want to predict a link that is not occurring but between nodes that have been learned. So entities at training time are exactly the same entities as used for prediction time, which means this cannot or can only rather badly operate on unseen graphs, which means after a dynamic graph update or a new subgraphs comprised of completely new entities, this thing has to be retrained, otherwise it doesn't work anymore. The point is in transductive link prediction, you see here the scores of the state-of-the-art models. They haven't made much progress recently. So they are quite good here, but um, there has not been made much process. So therefore, another task came up where one tried to, let's say, try to deploy the power of uh, knowledge graph embeddings in a better way. And that then would be inductive link prediction. So in the inductive link prediction, the links are different on the training data, which means that the entities trained are not the same as the entities that we are trying to predict, which means that here we can operate on unseen entities. So here to the left, you have the training uh, or the entities that we use for the training and to the right are the entities that we did not see in the knowledge graph that we trained the, the embeddings with. So then we distinguish between two types of inductive link prediction. The first one is fully inductive link prediction and the other one is the semi-inductive link prediction. So what are the difference between these two types or subtypes of inductive link prediction? Okay, let's start with fully inductive link prediction. There, the prediction knowledge graph is a completely new knowledge graph, totally disconnected from the training graph, which means link prediction is performed over a completely new graph with unseen entities mm -hmm. only. So the pattern we follow here is unseen to unseen. If we go further, then we also have semi-inductive link prediction. So in the semi-inductive link prediction, the prediction knowledge graph is larger because then it includes the updated knowledge graph that has the unseen entities, which means that the link prediction can involve, involve both seen and unseen entities. And the patterns for prediction include seen to unseen entities, unseen to seen entities, as well as both sides being unseen. So this is much, um, I would say, has more scope than the fully inductive link prediction. But the fully inductive link prediction is more complicated than this one because in that prediction, more difficult. yeah, more difficult because you you don't see the both um, entities. True. Okay. The last uh, thing we want to talk about here is entity classification. As we have said already, this is a special type of link prediction. And this is about predicting a type or class for an entity, given some characteristics of the entity. And it's a very common problem in machine learning that is also known as base classification. For example, if you want to find out what type is the entity Isaac Asimov, so Isaac Asimov is, uh, so whatever, this would be a tail prediction on an object which is supposed to be a class, so it would be entity classification. One way to do that is of course in a supervised learning approach, their type prediction can be addressed via classification model based on labeled training data. And typically this is a set of entities in a knowledge graph which have types attached to it. So that's the typical scenario we are talking about. And there are several type prediction or entity classification task. As with any classification, there is a multi-class prediction wherein in a knowledge graph, there are more than one classes for prediction. For example, 
uh, Isaac Asimov can be a sci-fi author, chemist, climatologist, etc., etc. And then there is the single label classification where there is um, a restriction that only one type can be assigned per entity. And lastly, there is a multi-label classification wherein entities can have more than one type or can be assigned to more than one class. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Further applications on link prediction and knowledge graph completion would be, for example, identity prediction. So this is about predicting the entity of uh, the identity of two entities. So, for example, searching for nodes in the knowledge graph that refer to the same entity but are not explicitly stated or entailed to be the same. So this is more or less the same like entity matching or record linkage or deduplication. You might have heard about that. Another one, and in our times really important problem, would be fact checking and validation in which we try to mm -hmm. predict the plausibility of a given fact. So this is a triple classification mm -hmm. problem, of course, with a specific scenario that you have here in mind. And of course, but also rather important, when you do fact checking and you find out something is identified to be wrong, this is the knowledge graph correction. means. First, you have to identify wrong information and then probably by complementing the missing information, which means you cut away the wrong information, you do knowledge graph completion again to correct then the knowledge graph at that point. Okay, so you have seen many scenarios where knowledge graph embeddings are rather handy to complement and to help with problems, first of all in the knowledge graphs, but also then to create a representation of these knowledge graphs that can directly be used in models for prediction and for classification. However, we live in a time where the announcement of large language models, of course, floods the media every day. So we had ChatGPT, Chat we had GPT-3, GPT-4, maybe in October there will be already GPT-5 or whatever model. Mm -hmm. So it's time now that we also focus on the relation between knowledge graphs and language models. And exactly that we are doing in the next lecture.